page 141, 142, correct? So do you feel comfortable with one through four? Any questions that you need me to go over? Anything? Nothing? Got to be something. Question number two. Question number two? So. Oh. Number 11. What key information? Oh, that might provide a better understanding of the data. It doesn't really matter. Education, income. And it doesn't really matter. Does it matter if you didn't really see that doesn't really matter, does it? Hmm. I well, I guess. Well, I guess what you could say would be missing is it doesn't have a line of best fit, doesn't have the equation of the line of best fit, it doesn't have the, the so R value. If, if we draw a, a scatter plot like this, are we supposed to draw a line of best fit with it? Yeah, and you could do that on a calculator. Man, I got a splinter. How did you get a splinter? I don't know. Okay. Um, the line of best fit is. Oh, hey, yeah, you don't have a line of best fit. Uh, estimate the correlation. I'd say the correlation is 0. 0.7 to 0. 0.8, somewhere in there. How do I know that? Guessing. Yeah, because so if it has more of a linear shape, then it's going to be closer to one, right? Correct. And, and the, if it's more randomized, but still moving in like a positive line, yeah, then it's, it stays in a. a if the closer to zero you get, the worse it is. The closer to negative one it is, it would be a slope that would be negative. Going, yeah. And then the correlation in the context of this question, it looks like the more the more you make shows the higher education you have. Though there are a couple outliers that just have, you know, the twelfth grade education is up there at two hundred twenty-five thousand. Is that what it is? Is that income for like week? I would hope. A month because. Well, I hope it's like per month because it's like that's. I want to throw another zero in there, but I don't know. I went to seven. Well, I went for seven because I went to school part time. Okay, well, so let's say that you were one of these outliers and you make twenty-five thousand dollars. Negatory. <laughs> No, I, let's see, my, I would say that I'm at, at 16 plus years of education, because I got a master's, and, and I definitely make more than $25,000 a year. Well, I would hope so. I made like 26000 Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. You know me, I, I, I am not, you will never hear me complain about what I make. No, if I was a teacher, I would put a tip jar out on my Nah, I don't need that. I a question, I need a 25% tip. So, so if you don't take anything from this class other than this statement I'm about ready to make, you'll be fine in life. If you learn to live within your means, your life is going to be very happy. It's the one that says, "Ooh, I have to go have that." So, so that that's kind. Of, so, so if you can't afford a million dollar house, then don't try and buy a million dollar house. Be happy with what you own. Don't be happy what you don't have. You can always work for more. Yes. All right. So we're good on the rest of this uh, homework. We're good. We're happy. Content. No one sad. At least not for my class. All right. So let's do some notes. I'm on page uh, 35 of our book. 35, 36. Okay. So. Correlation. Correlation. Is the R value. You get the R value on the calculator. No, you do not have to count to find that by hand, okay? 
it's an important indicator knowing what the relationship is between two different variables. So shoe size and height, something like that. Okay, but there are other lurking variables that take place. Okay, so let's say we wanted to go check, um, let's say we're going to go check blood, blood pressure um, at a yoga studio or a, a gym with, uh, you know, lots of cardio stuff. Let's say we wanted to check blood pressure of the people that go to a gym. And then we, you know, make a conclusion saying, hey, people go to the gym, have either a higher or lower blood pressure than the rest of society. Are there other things that people that perhaps are more adept to do that join fitness centers than, say, others? I mean, are there some people that have a better diet based on, you know, going to a gym? You know, that might be a lurking variable. Okay, so a lot of times they'll say that, you know, hey, we're comparing these two things, so they must be related. But the thing that we have to know is the bolded word is correlation never by itself implies causation. Correlation never by itself implies causation. Okay, just because you have taken two variables and you've plotted them on the x-y axis and you put, put them on your calculator, you put the data in, just because we have some sort of positive or negative correlation does not imply causation. Okay, so you have to be really careful about that. And I talked about, you know, bad studies, but there's a lot of times... You know, like, do you think teachers during the summer or students during the summer maybe have a lower heart rate? Yeah. So, summer's good for you. No. Yeah. It's going back. Yeah, I mean, so you can sit there and say summer's good for you. You can say summer's good for you because you have a lower heart rate. But what are other things that take place during summer that don't take place during a normal school year? Well, we don't have to wake up early in the morning. Okay, yeah, your sleep schedule. Heck, most of you guys and girls during the summer don't know what a morning is. And that makes you normal. Heck, I'm lucky that I'm up pat, you know, after 7 o'clock uh, during the summer at p.m. Yeah, I'm old. I don't sleep as much. <laughs> so like I got up not because I set an alarm or anything, but my friend called me to make sure I was leaving her out. And it's like six thirty AM. That's why you don't keep your phone in your room when you sleep. Yeah, it was awful. I don't ever listen to my phone. I put mine on the office side of the Gotcha. Alright. So <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't read school emails from home. I don't uh, ever have my cell phone in my room when I'm sleeping. I, no. I mean, that, those are just things, but that's because, you know, stirrup's old. And, you know, you can't look this good without sleeping. So exactly. it's like, dude, if that's what you look like with by sleeping, man, <laughs> I'll never sleep again, pal. <laughs> All right, so uh, here's just kind of a silly. They said uh, in 2003, a study by Harvard University, so sometimes... Um, prestigious schools will do a study and it's got to be the gospel truth but it says a prospective study of fruit and vegetable intake and risk of type 2 diabetes in women found a negative correlation that the higher consumption of fruits and vegetables is associated in some way to lower a lower risk of type 2 diabetes okay and so you could easily find this study online no we're not going to look it up but um, so one, you put the stamp of approval of Harvard on there, a lot of people look to it rather than saying, you know, Glendale Community College did a study. It's like, what the heck's Glendale Community College? It's community college in Glendale, Arizona. You want to know what Glendale was known for? Not academic. I'll tell you what. You go out at night and you meet, you know, because when we used to go meet girls, sorry, we, uh, 
meet someone from Glendale? You're like, no. I'll call you. You don't have to call yeah. me. So, yeah, I'm just joking. I mean, it, it, that was always the joke. The west side of Phoenix, so it was always kind of the... But, of course, if you lived on the west side of Phoenix, you always made fun of the east side of Phoenix or the south side of Phoenix or the north side of Phoenix, whatever. So, um, so the follow-up question to this is if people eat more fruits and vegetables, will the risk of type 2 di diabetes go down? In other words, does increased fruits and vegetables directly cause lower risk of type 2 diabetes? Okay. So, I mean, it seems good. I mean, everyone thinks uh, if I have a healthier diet, I'm going to probably have the onset or offset of certain diseases, which is true. But there are other things that could be in place. Um, so here's, here's kind of the silly. I am the smallest cousin on the stirrup side, not just because of height, but because of weight. I have cousins that are in the 400 pound range and they smoke nonstop. And I don't think anything has ever been put in their mouth that hasn't been deep fried two to three times. <laughs> and they're like, no, nah, this doesn't affect you. It's like, dude, you can't get into a car. You know, my aunt Jackie, God love her soul. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman, unfortunately passed away. She used to own a truck stop in North Carolina. And her biscuits and gravy, I can assure you that my life has been cut a little bit shorter than it should be because her biscuits and gravy. And Aunt Jackie, uh, oh, biscuits were like the size of a football. You know, you had sausage gravy, and you didn't have little chunks of sausage. You was like, here, we're going to have like nine different sausages on there. And you're like, oh, this is the best thing ever. And they were fantastic. So everyone, oh, everyone, so everyone in my, at that truck stop knew about Jackie's biscuits and gravy. It didn't matter morning, noon, or night, you're getting the biscuits and gravy, and you're going to be full, and you're probably not going to live long after eating too many of them. <laughs> um, so the problem that both variables could easily be associated by other variables. Uh, so can people who are very healthy in life get type 2 diabetes? Yes. Yes. Um, are there people who, who are morbidly obese who don't have type 2 diabetes? Yeah. I think so. Um, now, that's the hard thing. You all are subjected to this huge social experiment these days that has, is relatively new. Your Instagrams, your Snapchats, you know, I'd say Facebook, but that's like old people stuff. This is true. I mean, any of those things, I, and yes, I am on Facebook, and I used to always laugh by people that I know who would post something politically or environmentally or anything else, and I'd be like, you barely made it out of high school, but yet you are trying to influence who to vote for or what to buy or it's silly. A lot of people will look at their phone saying, this is what's on my phone. My friends, I'm going to caution you, but also applaud you. One, you have information nonstop, which is great. But, but, please understand, a lot of the times that you're looking at things that are coming across that your friend forwarded 15 times from somebody else is entertainment. Okay? Unfortunately, there's too many people out there that are like, this is what it shows. And and I'm not trying to take away from your friends, and I'm not taking, trying to take away from you, but let's face it, there's a heck of a lot of funny, and I, I hope I say this right, memes, that's the picture where someone puts a little quote in there, they're funny. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy them. I laugh, I giggle, I think it's hilarious, and memes are now, let, help me out, because you, you, you all know this better than I. Is a meme just a picture, usually of some sort of cute picture or a celebrity or anything like that? Or, Not anymore. Whoa, 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 what can it be now? Anything. Literally anything. So you can have like a blue screen with a quote on it? It's like, yeah. look at this meme? That would be the funniest one ever. Yes, yes. Okay. Like, Our subject is the first devolving very quickly. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's the most basic ones that you just look at and you're like, oh. Like, here, I'll find one. Yeah, I'll find one. <laughs> You'll find me something? Yeah. Don't show me. Don't show me anything that I have to report. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, bring it up here. Is it a picture of me? Uh oh, uh oh. Like these are funny. I can't count to four. But why is that funny? I don't know. It's just this. Well, I tell you, I this older. Uh oh, what's this one? Uh oh, here comes one. <laughs> That's kind of funny, yeah. but I don't know what it means. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. Oh, okay, but it is funny to look at. Yeah, it's a cow with his head stuck in a little car. All right, so, so is it possible that people eat more fruits and vegetables, exercise more? Sure, it's possible. Friends. Is it, so I went, is it plausible? So plausible is like kind of a possibility. Is it also plausible that people who eat more fruits and vegetables also consume more fiber? Uh, that's also plausible. Is it plausible that people who eat more fruits and vegetables also consume more vitamins like iron and potassium and other vitamins? Sure. So there are lurking variables that take place that you have to be aware of. There's, we know that you will go anywhere outside there's always a collection data. You ever go over to the mall and someone wants to have you fill out a survey or sign a uh, petition? This is a petition that, uh, that you can get free puppies all the time. Oh. Now, what's the problem with collecting signatures at the mall? Yeah. Okay. Now, you're, if you're collecting information because you want to put something on the... Um, on a, on a ballot, I, I thought it was, I, I, I find humor in a lot of things, and I think you all realize that. But I remember many years ago, they were trying to get past medical marijuana here. You, I don't know if you know this, but it's, all, it's passed, and it's no longer medical, now it's recreational. But it went through a whole bunch of series of collecting votes, or collecting signatures, and influencing things. Now, um, and I, I'm not going to tell you that I'm for or against anything. I'm not trying to lean any way, which way or, or form. I mean, the last time I smoked pot was about 20 minutes ago. So, you know, I'm just kidding. I, I'm recording, so I, I'm just kidding out here. Wait a minute. That means yeah. we were in class for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, he, so here, here, here is what I find is silly. So, were, shh, hang on, were there things, I don't know if you, any of you remember when these votes took place, but were there things that were quote unquote promised that if this passes, some other thing would take place? Do you agree? One of the big promises that came with passing recreational marijuana is the amount of funding by taxes that would go towards education. Okay? Now, here's, here's the small print that no one read about the education. You all know which education this goes towards? Anyone know? Not privatized. Public. No, nope, not public. Well, kind of public, but not, not this school. Not charters. Unless they fall under a certain disclaimer. Okay. Your school, in order to get any funding from the taxes on marijuana, you had to have a 95% free and reduced lunch for your student population. So, oh, so we're now friends, now friends, I, I know that there are schools in less affluent regions than Cherry Creek. Now we do have students here, perhaps there's students in this classroom, and I'm not trying to point anybody out, I'm trying to embarrass, but there are people in this classroom who, because of financial situation, are on free and reduced lunch. 
But could you imagine if 95% of Cherry Creek High School was? I mean, you're talking about 3,500 plus. It is. It's pretty much this year. Yeah, this year, everyone. No, it's a government out. program, though. Um, it's called Free and Reduced Lunch. It falls into it. They get free lunches this year? Everyone, yeah. It's dope. I get two meals a day. Now. Nobody has told me this. Like, I've been starving in my office. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Sir, so. you're an adult. <laughs> so? Hey, are you so. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't I don't get this shake because I'm starving. Yeah. <laughs> so so do you think do you think do you think do you think there's any schools that you could think of that would be at ninety five percent free and reduced lunch as a government subsidized program? George Washington? Smoky Hill. Smoky Hill is at 45%. Maybe some school. According to the elementary school I went to was a little over the top. Places in Pueblo, that's very possible. Oh, Pueblo is And the charter schools, it's very possible for someone to open a charter school. Now, the other place that money goes towards is incarcerated education programs. So people who are in jail. So, so were were they lying when they were trying to influence the voters to get this passed? It was misleading. Yeah. Hey, this goes towards education. Oh yeah, I'm all for that. And then all of a sudden, people are going, "Where did it go? Well, you didn't read the fine fine print. Why do you have to read the fine print?" Because that's what you're supposed to do. Okay. I'm not a, I, I'm really happy that um, we have mail-in ballots. Because I was not a favorite person to be with when I would go to an election booth. I would be in that election booth for 45 minutes. Okay, because one, I had done research. I wanted to make sure that I had an understanding of everything. So now, mail-in ballots, I can sit in the comfort of my own home researching what do I want to vote for. Now, do things that I vote for not get passed? Sure. But I like to think that I am somewhat of a educated voter because I know that there's some people I would say, I'm just going to vote all the way down this side or all the way down this side. I'm never going to vote any judges back in, I, but that's just how people vote. Is there anything wrong with how they vote versus how I vote? No, you vote how your comfort is. But the thing is, educate yourself on what you're truly voting for, even if it doesn't pass, okay? So, so th again, things, lurking variables are things that are happening behind the scenes that you're not seeing, that aren't being presented, okay? Um, let's say, Let's say you did a study over the past year and you found that the automaker Chevrolet got in more car accidents in Colorado. And so the conjecture made saying Chevys don't do well in snow. And, and I'm just saying, I mean, and I'm not trying to make fun of the Chevrolet automaker. I'm just trying to say, just trying to have a point. So, what are some things you can think about if I said Chevys don't do well in snow? Yeah. They only did the statistic for one state. One state? I like it. Snow. One okay. State. Good. Yeah. They did it for the rear wheel drive. Oh, rear wheel drive. I like it. That great stuff. So, there's some lurking variables now. I don't know. I, I just completely made this up, so it's fake. But one thing that you may, might want to look at as well is there a higher percent of Chevrolet cars on the road? And, and I'm just, you know, just making it up, but it might be something to think about. Like if someone said, oh, I have the safest car, it didn't meet, made it, make any of the data. Well, what kind of car you have? It's the ABC car. What the heck is the ABC car? It's, you know, it, it's made by this uh, special automaker and blah, blah, blah. Like people could say like Bugattis might be the safest car out on the road because less, less Bugattis get in car accidents. There's a lot less Bugattis. There's not a lot of people driving around million dollar cars or whatever they cost. Who's going to drive dangerously 
actually like risky in a million uh in a half a million dollar car. I understand. Like I'm driving like all the way up to the wheel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but again but again it becomes something where you could sit there and say what are some factors that are contributing to this? And one could be definitely the amount of something that takes place. Um, if I were to go to the state of Nebraska and say, my goodness, their beef consumption here is much higher than other states. So these people, these people eat beef a lot more often. Well, I can tell you that I have eaten meals in Nebraska and I can tell you that I have gone to places that have some of the best steaks I've ever had in my life. And it's really inexpensive. Why is that? Well, the cow that was just slaughtered, his whole family is out in the field next to the slaughterhouse. I mean, it's, that's, yeah, I mean, there's a restaurant in North Platte that I eat at every time we drive out to Nebraska. It's called Merrick's. 18 ounce steak, probably the best beef I've ever had with a baked potato and salad and a Coke. Coke is any type of soda in Nebraska, by the way. Um, $13. $13 for an 18 ounce steak, potato. They didn't have that on the menu. They had sirloin, they had 18 ounce steak. That's literally how it's labeled on the menu. They have double cheeseburgers with fries and a Coke for two ninety five. See, I'm down with that. And, like, I go to so why is it so much less expensive there? Yeah, they have a lot of it. It's like if you go, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to offend some people right now, but hey, it's Starbucks class, so if you <laughs> didn't get offended at least once by what I said. Friends, I hate to tell you this, but the sushi that you're eating here isn't it's fresh. It's like, no, they fly it in. Is the airport on the dock that they caught the fish at? Well, no. Where did it fly in from? LAX? That's 45 minutes from the ocean. Yeah, so you have to catch it. You have to take the boat and drive the boat to the dock. After that, they've got, you're throwing the fish to the guy on the dock. Hopefully, he doesn't drop it. I don't know if that really takes place, but, you know, it's kind of my story, so I'm having fun with it. Then I have to get onto a truck. Who knows if it's really a refrigerator truck or at the back of some guy's Chevy pickup that doesn't do well in the snow. Um, then it gets to the airport. The plane's late, so they're having to wait for the plane sitting there in the heat of LAX. They then put it on the plane. The plane flies DIA. DIA is like 45 minutes that way, right? And then you're like, you're down there in Castle Rock, an hour and a half from the airport. So, oh, this is fresh sushi. I, I, now don't, I'm not trying to, to upset you by the whole thing. But I'm not trying to upset you by the thing, but you just have to think about, is it... But many years ago, my wife and I, prior to having kids, we went to Bahaba, Maine. It's actually Bar Harbor, but they say Bahaba back in Maine. I had a lobster dinner for eight bucks. Yeah. Right. Math mobile. All right. It crashed bird. All right, so. So, being that there are many variables that could be linked to the decreased risk of type 2 diabetes, being there are many variables that are linked to type 2, but they only tested two of the variables, you know, which one has a cause or a true cause, you know, for showing that a person would have type 2 diabetes? There's no way to answer the question based on if you just had a scatter plot on, you know, eating vegetables, and I don't even know what they compared. But you can start discovering some relationships that might be taking place. You have to be very careful on the verbiage you use. The R squared coefficient, so if R, if R is between negative 1 to positive 1, R squared 
is between 0 and 1. R squared is not negative. Why is that? Well, if you take a negative number and you square it, thank you, Algebra 1, you have a positive number. Okay, R squared is a two-dimensional evaluation of it. Uh, again, your calculator, if your calculator has, is set up to show R, it's also going to show R squared. R squared is honestly just R times R. So if your R squared value was, you know, 0.896 big old fraction, get R squared, you go 0.896 big old decimal times itself. Okay, or erase it to the second power. All right. Consider a study to see whether vitamin A reduces arthritis pain. There was a study that after they collect data, they obtained a correlation of negative 0.72. So it's a negative sloped line. The more vitamin A you have, the less your pain. So, so basically they did something like this. Um, pain of 1 to 10. And then vitamin A in micromilligrams. That's the MMG. So they show basically this, okay? So the more vitamin A you had, the less pain you had on a 1 to 10 scale, okay? If you square that data, so, so they showed that you had this. So the R squared of this is negative 0.72 times negative 0.72, and they show that it has 51 or 0.518 roughly. Okay, this produces an R squared value. The inter proper interpretation is as follows 51%, 51.8% of the variation we saw in arthritis pain can be explained by the vitamin A intake. In other words, arthritis pain varies. Some people have higher amounts of pain, some people have lower amounts of pain. What explains this variance? Our data suggests that 51.8% of the variance can be explained by vitamin A. What accounts? For the other 48.2%, we don't know. Okay, so again, they're taking the R squared value, they're turning it into a percent, and then you do that just by add, uh, multiplying by 100. So this is what they're dealing with. So family history, pain tolerance, diet, exercise, age, other physical ailments, these are variables that may or may not explain the relationship. We don't know, and we didn't study them. For now, it's enough to know that we've explained that 51.2% of the variance. Okay, so R squared is called the variance, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. It has to do with the standard deviation as well. So, how do we establish cause? Friends, you have to make sure that when you're looking at information or you're publishing information that you're not saying this took place. If I took a coin and I flipped a coin 10 times and I got eight heads on the coin, I can't, I can't say with 80% probability that it's going to be heads every time, okay? So there's different things that take place. And in this last study, study by the University of Minnesota examining the impact of latter high school, later start, high school start times on health academic performance of high school students. Okay, this was huge. Friends, years ago, this school started at like 7.20. Now it starts an hour later. My medical class started at 6 a.m. And still had over 100 students in it. Okay? Now, have we seen our test scores at this school increase? The answer is yes. Have they seen overall test scores increase throughout the state that have now have one hour later start time? It's negligible. There's not enough to say one way or the other. Now, what would what could improve test scores? Because I can tell you, I haven't changed my teaching habit at all. It's just an hour later. What other things could improve test scores? Let me ask you all this. How many of you go to Sacramento or other tutoring? Got one? Okay, there's other classes in here, or other classes that I, I at the school. You did that, you'd have two thirds of the class raise their hand. I have some other form of tutoring. Okay? You go to a less affluent school. I, so I tutor, 
and I think I'm still too expensive. I charge 50 bucks for 90 minutes. Okay? And I feel bad about charging 50 bucks for 90 minutes. There are teachers in this department that charge $110 an hour to tutor. Now, who can pay that? Well, a lot of times students at a more affluent school can. But if you went to a less affluent school, are those students necessarily paying? There are a lot more tutoring centers that are opening up and tutors to gather. So is a later start time directly affecting our ECT, SAT, whatever test scores we're looking at? There's other things that are in play. Okay? Now, sad thing is, you can create a theory, but is a theory the gospel truth? No. A theory is based on your observations. Okay, I got like two weeks worth of observations, therefore I'm going to apply it to the rest of the year. That's kind of silly. Um, let's see. Anything else there? Uh, correlation is great for creating theories. Correlation is great for but not proving them. So that's pretty big to think about, okay? Writing relationships between variables. Let's assume that a research study found strong negative relationship between the consumption of vegetables and cholesterol level. More veggies you eat, more veg or less cholesterol, okay? So, my friends, there's a lot of information on this unit. It's good stuff. I want to make sure I get it good there. So... Friends, 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 friends. Page 143, 144. And I forgot to tell you one thing real quick. It's called the Hawthorne effect. I have to look it up real quick. Hawthorne. Okay. Okay. So, on page 37, read about the Hawthorne effect. Okay. Got you in. Got you covered.